Hello, in this video I'll be working through Unit 2 homework problems 15 through 17. And these problems have to do with differentiability. Number 15 says that x equals 0, tell whether the function has a corner, cusp, vertical tangent, or discontinuity. And since we haven't learned an easy way to find these derivatives, we're going to do this by looking at the graphs. So part A, let's sketch the graph of y equals tan inverse x. The graph does pass through the point 0, 0. We're approaching a value of 0 from the left and the right hand side. And the function value at that point is 0. So the graph is continuous at x equals 0. We don't have a corner because there's not a sharp turning point there. We don't have a cusp because the limit isn't approaching infinity and negative infinity on either side of that point. And we don't have a vertical tangent. The slope of the tangent line is not zero at that point. If I were to draw the tangent line to the graph at the point where x is zero, it's going to look about like that. It has a slope of one. So for part A, the answer is actually none of the above. Part B, let's look at the graph of y equals x to the power four fifths. So this graph at x equals 0 has a cusp. As we approach 0 from the left hand side, the slope is negative and it's getting steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. As we approach 0 from the right hand side, the slope is positive, it's getting steeper and steeper and steeper. So this is a cusp at x equals 0. It's not a vertical tangent, and it's not a discontinuity. There is a point at 0, 0, and the limit as we approach from the left and the right is 0. So the graph is continuous at x equals 0. Part C, y equals x plus the square root of x squared plus 2. At x equals 0, the function is equal to 2. And then when x is positive, this is equal to 2x plus 2. So it looks something like that, probably a little bit steeper than that. And when x is negative, it's just equal to 2. At x equals 0, the graph is continuous. There is a point here, f of 0 equals 2, and the limit as we approach from the left and the right is also 2. So the graph is continuous at this point. We do not have a vertical tangent. We don't have a cusp because the slope isn't approaching infinity and negative infinity on either side. This is a corner. We have a sharp turning point here, a corner point. So there's a corner at x equals 0. And then part D, if we sketch the graph of y equals 3 minus the cube root of x, I'm exaggerating this a little bit, but it looks about like that. And here, the graph is continuous when x equals 0. There is a point there. At x equals 0, y equals 3. And the limit is 3 as we approach from the left and the right hand sides. So the graph is continuous. We don't have a corner or a cusp. This is a vertical tangent. If I were to sketch the tangent line to the graph at x equals 0, it would be a vertical tangent line. Number 16, for each of the following prompts, give an example of a function that satisfies the stated criteria. A formula or a graph with reasoning is sufficient for each. If no such example is possible, explain why. So part A, we're looking for a function f that is continuous at a equals 2, 
but not differentiable at a equals 2. It's continuous, so we don't have a discontinuity. Not differentiable, so it could be a cusp or a corner point or a vertical tangent. So there's lots of possible functions you could use as an example. I'm going to use an absolute value function. So here's my graph of f, and we'll put the vertex at 2, and this is f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 2. So this function has a corner point at x equals 2, therefore it's not differentiable at that point. However, it is continuous at that point because f of 2 equals 0, and the limit of f as we approach 2 from the left and the right is also equal to 0. Part b, we want a function g that is differentiable at a equals 3, but does not have a limit at a equals 3. If it's differentiable at that point, then it must be continuous at that point. And if it's continuous at that point, it must have a limit at that point. But we're told it does not have a limit. And if it does not have a limit, then it's not continuous. And if it's not continuous, then it's not differentiable. So this is an impossible situation. Not possible. If g does not have a limit at a equals 3, then it is not continuous at a equals 3. And if it is not continuous at a equals 3, then it is not differentiable at a equals 3. Part C, we want a function h that has a limit at a equals negative 2, is defined at a equals negative 2, but is not continuous at a equals negative 2. If it has a limit at a equals negative 2, but it's not continuous there, that tells us it's a removable discontinuity. So at negative 2, we're just going to draw a graph that has a removable discontinuity. So a hole in the graph. But we're told that it is defined at a equals negative 2, so there must be another point at that x value. Okay, so here's one possible way to draw that graph. Part D, we want a function p that satisfies all of the following. p of negative 1 equals 3. So negative 1, 3. And the limit as we approach negative 1 is 2. Now that's a two-sided limit, so we have to be approaching 2 from both sides there. So right away I know there must be a removable discontinuity there. p of 0 equals 1, so a point here, and p prime of 0 equals 0. So that tells me that I have a horizontal tangent, right? So the graph's going to either look like this or like this at 0. From Roman numeral 1, I know that there is a hole in the graph. Okay, so to make this happen, I'm going to draw it like this, and then we'll just go straight out here. Okay, now we're also told in Roman numeral 3 that the limit of p as x approaches 1 is equal to p of 1, and p prime of 1 does not exist. If the limit of p as we approach 1 is equal to p of 1, that tells us that the graph is continuous at 1. 
but the derivative doesn't exist. If it's continuous and the derivative doesn't exist, we might have a vertical tangent at that point, we might have a corner, we might have a cusp. So when x is 1, I'm just going to draw a corner point, like so. Number 17. Consider the graph of the function y equals p of x. Assume that each portion of the graph of p is a straight line as pictured. Part a, state all values of a for which the limit of p as x approaches a does not exist. Now this isn't referring to the derivative, it's just referring to the graph of p. So where does the limit not exist? We have a removable discontinuity at 3, but the limit does exist there, so we're not going to use that one. We also have a jump discontinuity at x equals 0. So that's the value of a where our limit does not exist, a equals 0. Part b, state all values of a for which p is not continuous. Well, it's not continuous at a equals 0 because there's a discontinuity there. There's a jump discontinuity there. We also have a removable discontinuity at a equals 3. So not continuous at a equals 0, not continuous at a equals 3. Part C, state all values of a for which p is not differentiable. So where is it that the slope of the graph is undefined? Well, that's going to be here because we have a corner point. It's going to be here because we have a jump discontinuity. Here we have a corner point. Here we have a corner point. And here we have a discontinuity. So we have several values of a where this function is not differentiable. So we have a equals negative 2, a equals 0, a equals 1, a equals 2, and a equals 3. Part D, sketch an accurate graph of y equals p prime of x. p prime of x is the derivative of p of x, or we can also think of that as the slope of p of x. And since our function p is piecewise linear, we can easily figure out the slope of each piece, and we'll use that to create our derivative graph. So on the far left, the slope in this part of the graph is negative 2. And then right here, the slope is undefined. So we have a corner point right there. So a derivative does not exist at that point. In the next piece, our slope is, let's see, down 1 and right 2, so negative 1 half. And then at 0, our slope is undefined there again. So we have not differentiable when x is 0. The next piece, again, not differentiable here, um, but the next piece has a slope of positive 1, and then not differentiable here, then a slope of 0, not differentiable here, and then finally in our last piece we have a slope of 3. So my slope is negative 2 until I get to an x value of negative 2, where it's undefined. And then the slope is negative 1 half until I get to 0, where the slope is undefined, so open circle there as well. And then the slope jumps up to 1 undefined at this endpoint here, and it's 1 until we get to x equals 1, undefined there, and then the slope is 0 until we hit 2, undefined there, and then the slope is 3.